basically uh, on the public level, we are an online social platform for visual artists. And <coughs> the idea behind that is to, is to actually solve the problem of uh, matching the right artists with the right project. So there are a lot of online galleries, uh, but you know, Behance does a really great job showcasing work. But what we do is we want to know, and you guys are educators, so you relate to this, beyond the work is who is the artist? Are they reliable? Can they follow directions? Are they easy to work with? Can they collaborate? You know, all those intangibles that you get when you do interviews. I don't know if any of you went to the session yesterday about visual, uh, data visualization. Mm -hmm. You went? That's what we're doing. So we basically are creating a community, and we need thousands of people to uh, collect all the data from their work and interaction, and that will become a visual resume. So we call it our LinkedIn for visual artists, so that people understand. Mm -hmm. So imagine LinkedIn for visual artists, how that would look like. Because LinkedIn is very you know, corporate and dry. So LinkedIn for visual artists have to have, a things have to be created. So we're creating that community, so that engaging the artists, and then taking all the data. So we have that visual resume where you have a timeline for your work and interconnected with the your network, the people that you know. So if you if you are an artist and I see your visual resume, so you work, I also see that you're connected to them because you work three years in a row. So I can ask that conversation quickly. Uh, or I can see your sensibilities and I will have information about whether you need deadlines or uh, you prefer to work at night. Things like that. So but that's the business side. What you're gonna see today is actually the cool side. <laughs> which is which is the, the what, how do you how do you build a creative community a community for people who are visual where do you start so uh, the one thing that we know is that if we're going to create a social network for visual artists say a Facebook for visual artists it had to be created it had to be a place where they will communicate visually because I'm already having a hard time explaining words without the visual side. We're, we're much more eloquent uh, visually. Uh, and uh, it, it, a place where they can connect creatively. And that's very important. And there's nothing really out there that is professional and also uh, that people will enjoy. So with that background, what came out out of it was actually a platform for visual conversations, which meant somebody makes a drawing, and anyone in the community can reply to that drawing and to create narratives and stories. And I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of how, what were the decisions and the thought process in making this platform so that people will actually have conversations with visuals. And some of the challenges and also some of the ideas for the future as, as we develop this, because it's really very new. And we have about 3,000 illustrators in the platform. And um, some of them are coming to draw every day, some of them every week. Um, there are about 50 drawings created every day. And it's, it's what you see is conversation. And it, that's a very, very interesting thing. And it's really cool. So uh, that's all I think I can say until we until I show you. Can you talk about the demographic that participates? Sure, we because it's a professional network. <coughs> we're, we're you know we're targeting uh, artists, visual artists, and school and uh, professional, right? And um, we're targeting right now illustrators as we develop and understand this platform, and then we are going to open it to designers and photographers and filmmakers, any kind of visual artist. Um, it's always better to start with a vertical that you can understand better what are the, you know, the, 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 how to design it well. Okay? Online is a very tricky space. So. Yeah, so does anyone have any questions? Any, are you curious? Like they're from all over the world? Or yeah, it's global. So, so 
always a pleasure to have somebody who makes a drawing in Argentina and somebody else in the Netherlands. How did you meet them? Uh, well, we started with our network. And then uh, we do experiments in, with Facebook ads, little ones. We don't, we're not doing big campaigns or anything, just little experiments because we're changing the platform pretty much every day. Um, so these things, the way, and this is more about technology, but the way technology, space and technology works is you do the minimum that you can do, and then you throw it out there for the users to interact with it, to learn, and then you change, you learn and you change. So it's a process that is very fast. So basically we are, uh, you know, we're iterating every day and changing things according to, to, the, to what they do. But what we have now is, you know, a collective of global uh, artists who are, who understand now how to have conversations. And, and not entirely with our words, we have a, uh, at the end of every conversation, there is a, uh, you can make comments, you can write comments. So it's interesting because it becomes meta. Like they do a drawing, then somebody else does another drawing, they, they have a story, but they're commenting as well. So then the, the other person will take whatever is being said in text and reply to that as a repetition. It's, it's really interesting. So ideally to me, it would be great to find a way of, of the, that this interface will live without any words at all. So basically all that data, it's like uh, resumes are for us completely useless because we need to see the work. But once you see the work, what about the person? How you make sure that it's the right fit for that project or for that, you know, for your company? You do it with interviews, but if you need to ensemble a team, of 20 people but by next week, you have to make decisions really quick. And basically what we do is we call the people that we know and get recommendations. We're trying to do that, what you get in the interviews, when you're interviewing people, through data and just by looking at you know, a picture uh, that is more three-dimensional of a person. That can involve hobbies, influence, uh, Passions, like if I know that somebody's really passionate about environment and I have a project that I have three people that are equally good, I will probably go with the person who's passionate about it. So to get to this, which we haven't even started, uh, we need to build that community. And what we decided was let's build a creative playground, a place where people can just be happy, draw, uh, do their art uh, without having to really uh, be focused on self-promotion or marketing or having a Twitter account when they're not really uh, good at it. <laughs> and so that they can spend their time doing what they do best. Where is that at? This is actually an exhibition in, in the New Museum uh, of Art. Uh, the artist is called Pavel, I forget the last name. Uh, but yeah, they created this white canvas where anyone could come and draw. So that's basically the spirit of what we want to do, what we're actually doing. Um, so just a quick, uh, to give context, we started with an image and we all know how powerful images are. Um, the thing about this image, of this is an illustration of Norman Rockwell, is that there's a story there. Right? Like, it's like you, you know what's happening, why they run, where they going, this, you know, it's all this dynam dynamism, and you get that in a few seconds. That's Im almost impossible to do with, with words, right? So there is this famous six word novel, which is actually amazing. Uh, it's attributed to Hemingway, but there's some controversy about it. But you have to be, be an amazing writer to get to tell a story in six words, right? But in, with images, you don't even have to be an artist to make a story. So that's the power that we have, and this is the base of what we're doing. So with that in mind, this is what we set out to do um, back in February. The dictatorship of words is over. Technology is enabling unprecedented new ways of communicating visually. What if animators and illustrators could update their status by sketching? And their friends responded to a drawing with an 
another drawing. Imagine a place where people can have conversations using only images. A community that encourages you to create and rewards you for it. What if we could connect to our peers all over the world by drawing together? For artists, work is play, and play is work. And when artists feel free in a creative playground, wonderful things happen. Can we facilitate crowdsourced content creation? The community could create their own stories. Not just illustrators and animators, but designers, photographers, filmmakers. And once visual artists have set the rules and tested the possibilities, we can open it to the world, to kids, to expand the boundaries of storytelling in the new visual web. So, any questions so far? Um, I belong to a website called Doodlers Anonymous, and is it, have you been to that? Do you know, I mean, it's more formalized. It seems like it's more like, here's an event drawing and stuff. I like the conversation aspect of that. We said someone could have a conversation and go to Thailand and have someone draw back. I, I, I think that it, that's very unique. Well, we're doing that, that I haven't seen is, is that there's a, a there's something very spontaneous yes, about it. Yes. Uh, and, and that's also one of the challenges, and I'll explain later why. But there's something really beautiful about just doing something and having a community that appreciates it and responds to it. Um, but one thing, I've, I've, I've been a director of animation for a long time, and I, one thing that I was aware of is like you don't create stories just by drawing because you end up with a bunch of drawings that may be great, but they're not really creating narratives. So a drawing in itself is not necessarily something that will drive uh, a conversation, right? I did this, in, I was in Mexico last week, and I did this, and if you, you know, there's not a lot of information there. So what are the things that we can do to propel the conversation to move forward? So one thing that you can do is that if you add a piece of text, then it becomes a, a status update, right, with a drawing. So then somebody may decide to reply because it's you know, raining in its city. Um, another thing that we can do is what if, what if somebody has, puts a text and you draw what they, what they, you know, what they have written? And then what does it say? It says, Flamingo meet a fish group. Mm -hmm. um, and then you leave the, a new cue for the next person. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, oh. this is actually <laughs> true. We did an event. And this, is, <laughs> this is what they did. And it's, yeah. a, it's a story of like 50. So it's very easy <laughs> for people, and it's fun, and it's creative, and it, you, you can still do really nice things. So do the windows pop up like that, like in relation to? No, this is for presentations. Okay. But really okay. ha what really happens is like here we have a reply button. So you reply, you get this drawing and, and your canvas, and then you paint so that you want okay. But I'll show it to you soon. Okay. So another way is to how do you create motion within the picture? So that you know, this is already asking somebody to do something. You know, what is what is that person uh, grabbing or holding mm -hmm. onto? So, any ideas? Dress. Of course. <laughs> there can be a million possibilities, which is, a, which is another <laughs> another another of the things that we have to think about is what can we make narratives that are non-linear that can just go like a, grow like a tree. Um, Maybe because we're playing each other with pizza. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you what they did. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be cool to see, you know, yeah. 10 of those and have that go in 10 different ways. So um, defining the rules of how this works because we, I did a lot of research and I, I found many drawing, you know, places where you can draw online live with other people, places with different uh, types of uh, uh, platforms for drawing. But I haven't found hey, anything that will be, uh, that will move for a conversation or a story. 
So we decided a few very uh, specific rules from the beginning. Uh, the specific four. Um, <laughs> so uh, one, for instance, we decided early on that the platform was going to have a horizontal scroll. And this is important because it, we're all used to scroll down, right? Yeah. And apparently it's very controversial in the, in the web design because people hate horizontal scrolling. Uh, apparently, according to, uh, you know, the, uh, they're asked a lot of people and that's what they say. But also, the developers had to do a lot more work because they're going against the conventions, right? So people avoid, <laughs> Uh, uh, the horizontal scrolling, but for me, it's, it only makes sense horizontally because you don't, if you think about it, you don't design a magazine horizontally, you design a magazine vertical. Or you don't shoot a movie vertical, you shoot a movie horizontally because that the screens are horizontal and because you're gonna get more out of the space. Um, and this is a horizontal surface. So the only reason why it was it's always been vertical, it's because the web was uh, made for text. But now that we're going more visual, uh, I, I think that we're gonna see much more horizontal scrolling. So it only makes sense to go that way if you're having a conversation in this hmm. space, right? So it's, it's a lot of abstractions you have to think about what works and so far nobody has complained at all. <laughs> Um, another consideration was to have this, in the beginning we had a tour book, so that it was clear that if you got there, you got there because you wanted to draw, and that's all you wanted to do. Uh, but now that we have so much drawings, and that's where you see your feet, it's kind of, it's kind of in the way, so we're gonna probably put it right here. Um, another important consideration was the reply. Like if, we, if we're gonna have non-linear narratives, if it's gonna grow like a tree, um, the team thought then we have to allow everybody to reply to any drawing. So if a conversation had 10 drawings, mm -hmm. you could come in and, and, and answer the first one or the fifth or the 10th if you wanted to. But I strongly opposed because I could see that that would be something like this rather than a branch or a tree that is growing in a direction. It would look more like this. And it might be interesting, but you, it's harder to make stories. So we decided that we would only have a reply one at the end of the conversation. So if a conversation has five drawings, you can only reply to the last one huh. so that it moves forward. Mm -hmm. um, and the final thing, obviously, it was that we should allow them to draw right there. So you're going to, to sign up and you can draw in the, in the browser. So, so, so Beatrice, if yeah. you responded, let's say I really responded to that, that um, monkey and I, had, I was doing my drawing frantically and someone posted right before me, am I out or does it just make sense I would just keep going horizontally? Like no, actually, if, if the two people did, the one instant that we decided at that moment where it will open a branch is if two people answer at the same time. Because sometimes it can take half an hour, right? Right, right. So if two people and you see samples of that, then it opens up and then anyone can continue either. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. We still figure out what's the best way of presenting that. We don't, we don't know yet, we're, we're still uh, you know, experimenting. So you go there and you can draw, this is, Sort of a very simple, this is how it looks, but you can do amazing things, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And you post, and then mm -hmm. somebody <laughs> might reply to that. Mm -hmm. And even though this was, there was no more, a lot of story, you already have a narrative here. And this, the, the actual one goes on for like 10 uh, drawings of monkeys. And um, so if I click here, I get the canvas, I still see the previous drawing so that I know what, what I want to continue and then I post that. So we call this visual status because it's like you're giving your uh, status update and somebody replies to it or comment to it, it's just visual. But then we thought if we start with a home, nobody, 
remember that this is very new. So if you have nobody in the platform, why are you gonna give a status to Google? If nobody can see it, nobody can like it, nobody can do anything. So what do you do to bring the first people to draw? So we created a variation of it that we call it the collaborative drawing, which is basically the same, only that the difference is that you can invite your friends through email. So I do a drawing and I send it to you, to you, to you, to you by email, and you get it in your email, you go and you see the, the drawing of the last person, and I can see that I'm the administrator or the host or whatever you want to call it, the person that started the, the drawing, and these people are participating. And it might be fun because I know them or because I um, don't know them, which we found that somehow people apparently like to draw with people they don't know. Maybe it's less intimidating. But then you see, if somebody's drawing at that moment, you can see who already draw. You can see also uh, somebody's drawing and it's it has 20 minutes left. So, so they know that by the hitting that reply button, then their status yeah. up? Oh. No, this, this is before you do the Oh, it is, reply. okay. Yeah, you just see the information right there. So, what so do you mean 20 minutes left? Like they because we put, we put a, a oh, 30 minutes. For this one specific, yes. Oh. <laughs> and um, so we don't know. We, we All of these things, eventually, you really have to pass it on to the user for them to decide if they want her, their friends to have five minutes or all day. That, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. because they're very different experiences. Um, but we created that and we still had this, which is a blank canvas. So people were signing up a lot, but nobody was doing anything. So what do you do? Uh, we have an advisor who saw this and said, like, you know, there's nothing more intimidating than a white black canvas. Why don't you have a few, when they come in, have a few drawings that they can reply to? And that's something we never thought because we already thought that it was going to be, I have my network of friends and only my friends will see what I'm drawing. Maybe the people who follow me, there's some privacy issues, but to just open it that right there to anyone, uh, we never thought of it, and it was what changed everything. So I had done a few tests with some illustrators, friends of mine, so we have some really good drawings. When you go into the site right now, you get into this, this is the first thing you get. So you're gonna have three, you know, ra three random drawings that you can reply, or you can pick and see the conversation, or you can draw if you want, or you can do it later. But at least you have something, and, and that works really well. So how these visual conversations look like, and I hope you find it interesting, it's because it's really fascinating. Um, in the beginning, we, we have things like this. Beautiful drawings, but they're co in, not connected to each other, right? Which is what I thought was gonna happen, even though I, I made it clear that, you know, this, they're looking to the side, there's this, the arm that needs to be filled, and it's not because people are not smart, they're super talented, smart people, it's because there's something in the interface that didn't help, because this is a new behavior that people are learning. learning. Uh, this is another <laughs> example, right? Like the second person got it, but the third didn't get it. Even, it still looks beautiful, but, Again, how will you move that forward? Right. How do you make it mm -hmm. so that it's that they're actually talking to each other or they're adding to a story uh, together? So this is one early that worked. Um, and then I'm gonna show you, <coughs> this is some of the, the, the ones that we have now. <laughs> These are like 30 drawings, mm -hmm. like so many different people. You can see all the different people here. And it's amazing that they, they just happen spontaneously. Look at this, you can see where, where it starts and where it ends. And it maintains a sense of style, even though they're very different people, right? Like you can, 
you can see that it's all within the same color palette, the same style. Uh, and this is, you know, some, some people write in Spanish, some people write in English, and it doesn't matter. So it goes on and on and on. And then it became about, I don't know, So, so that's an example. Another way of easy moving the conversation forward is that people maintain their style. In this case, the colors are the leitmotif of the narrative, but the styles are very different. So they're just drawing portraits of people in their own styles and uh, maintaining that uh, color palette. And you know, beautiful uh, collaboration. Are all the drawings digitally based, or are there oh, any no, like? There. I mean, are there any hand drawings uploaded, or is it no, all drawn no, on tablets, it's all, or, or? It's all there. It's okay. all drawn there. Okay. Eventually, we we are planning to so that you can add to a conversation with uh, even a picture. Like if you know, if you have a picture of that color palette, it would be great, or a video, or okay. anything. But right now, because we're still figuring out, we need to keep it as right. controlled right. as possible. <coughs> yeah. So this is the same, right? Like same same principle. Uh -huh. Like the, they maintain the sunglasses, the music theme, uh -huh. the colors, and uh, we call this hipster. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Any any thoughts or comments? Uh, who who retains copyright? Oh, they do. They do. That's very, very important for, for us because I'm, I'm an artist. So there are two things that are extremely important. One is they retain the rights of everything they do. And two, we need to make sure attribution is given to every single uh, work. So that's why we rather control it uh, for now that they draw it directly because we know what, what user did it yeah. and we can keep track of everything. But those are two very, very important things. In the beginning, actually, we had a share uh, tool. So they could share this drawing if they wanted. But it became sort of, it's not as clear as when you share in Facebook. It could pass, even though it says uh, uh, Dave shared Beatrice's work, it, it, it can look as if it's Dave's work. Mm -hmm. and so we took it out immediately, because that's very, very important. Uh, so, this is an instance where it started like that. This last week with Halloween and the other of those zombies. <laughs> so they started doing the zombies, but it became a story after a point, and and that's when it starts. You know, that's when it becomes much more sophisticated. And there are also zombies. So the the, the thought that people are putting the time and you know, contributing with so much. But uh, the caliber of the artist is excellent. How do you vet, do you vet them, or is it anyone no, can I'm, join I'm, it? No, everyone can join, okay. anyone. So there's a story, and it's different people. That's, in this case, he did two replies, but that story is done with four people. So the people have profiles that you can visit to see what the, what yeah. the stuff looks like? We, we haven't gone there yet, but next step is uh, so you click here in Raoul's profile and you get and see all the drawings that he's drawn, just his drawings. Um, but we have so much to do with this part still that uh, we haven't gone in there. So this one is a very, it's an incredible example of storytelling mm -hmm. uh, because he actually create, creates tension. Like he just added this house and then the previous illustrator put the little guy into the house. Well, I, I actually mm -hmm. put it inside, mm -hmm. yeah. And then he continued, and then this, this theme here, creature, robot, or whatever. Then somebody else decided that he climbed, and then this mysterious thing, and I put the hand because he was asking for it, <laughs> and then boom. Mm -hmm. And it keeps, 
if it turned out that it's a robot, like, I mean, it's amazing. And, and it created tension. Like, people are like, I got to my house and I, I wanted to see what, what, you know, what happened. And uh, <laughs> so, somebody said that it had more, more, more tension than half the, uh, the sci fi books he had written. Because it's happening as you. Somebody was like, stop it. <laughs> and then I read the last one. But it kept going, and it keeps going, and going, and it, you know, and all of a sudden it's this, and if you see it, it could be done by one person, because yeah. the styles are very cohesive, uh, and now it's, it's gone, it's becoming in color. <laughs> the last one was done yesterday, beautiful, look at that. Wow. So it's, it's really exciting. Uh, because the way I see it is, uh, and so a bit on video, it's we visual artists or visual people have been under the dictatorship of the work for all our lives. And now there is an opportunity to actually reclaim a place where it can be really mostly visual. <coughs> so this is an example where you break the uh, branch out, the story. Uh, and it can go either direction, and the other direction will be a completely different thing. And that's because they both replied at the same time. And what is interesting about it is that, this is another example of breaking, is that here, there's a menace, while in the other one it's like going free. It's like such a different, you know, yeah. you can go to, to such a different uh, places. So, our current challenges, uh, and this is not a long presentation actually, so, so maybe, um, but, I but our current challenges, challenges are too unspecific. We are allowing everyone to get in. Uh, of course, we're tar targeting professional illustrators. We're not just putting ads to anyone. We don't, we don't, uh, it's not gonna benefit us if, if kids 14 years old come into the platform at this moment. Right. Um, but it's open. Any one of you can go in and do drawings if you want to. And we want to keep it that way and we, and we think that not only the really good artists should live there, but also the, the ones that are starting out that will be inspired and will get better by collaborating with these good artists. So, the two problems that it does is, one is how you control quality. That's a big problem. Um, so somebody writes its name, uh, we have no control of, of, we can't delete it. Oh, you can't. Well, we won't, because it's all connected. Okay. So we don't want to. What if someone posts something that's very nitpicky? Yeah, very I, I get this, I see all the problems. Mm -hmm. but, it, but they're both equally important and hard to solve. So quality, how you maintain, because uh, look, what happens with most of the drawing platforms, like that one that you mentioned, Durli, yeah. and there is another one called Doodle D. This is Instagram for drawing sites. It's populated with bad drawings. Right. So the good, the people who, are actually, who actually excel at visual, you know, that are eloquent visually, are not gonna go there. Um, so we need to keep the quality so that we attract that people and we push those boundaries. Um, at the same time, they will allow anyone. So it, it's, it sort of has to like self-curate. So one, one thing is to, <coughs> is to respond in a way that they will, you know, <laughs> they will be witty or funny. Right, or, right. Uh, but we need to give the tools to artists to, to open the conversation whenever they want. So in this case, this is an adorable bear. There's nothing wrong with it. But maybe this person who spent so much time in this, this maybe they want something that is equally, uh, that has the same amount of effort or maybe uh, on the same style. So we have to give them the possibility to open and not to erase the, the other one because it's perfectly fine, but to have different options um, of, <laughs> of responses. Same here, this is the actual response that I got. 
And there's nothing, I mean, there's a, there's a, a statement there, but the styles don't match. Uh, so so how, how do you do it? And, and what we decided is like, we had that it opened when two people answered to it at the same time. Now we're giving the, the whoever does a drawing, they can open a branch for whatever reason, wow. because they want to have different directions of their story, because they thought that they wanted to see something else, whatever it is, but it's not offensive. Like some people have done that to my responses and uh, it doesn't feel offensive because it feels like maybe they just want more, uh, more, more, more content that is different than uh, through the drawing. So you basically are now have that little sign on top of your drawing. And if you click it, it becomes uh, an icon where anyone can come back and draw. So this is an example in which this, is, this conversation was all about manga. And this is a, 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 a way of coming, bringing the conversation back to where to where original was intended. So this is what you were saying about censoring, and so we knew that that was gonna happen at some point, that we were gonna get some men's, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Those there because right. that's what you usually get. Right. Um, so what, what do you do uh, in that moment? Knowing that we can't really raise men's game. So, the first time that we actually censored uh, somebody was this. Like somebody did this drawing and this is the response and this is the, how is, uh, you see it because it's, we basically put something on top of it. So he just wrote Hulu, which is not, I don't know, it's not such a bad word, but it's, it can be offensive for some people. But the reason our criteria was, okay, it doesn't add anything artistically. Right. It's not even a drawing. If we let it, then soon it's gonna look like some of those bathrooms in CBGB in the 80s, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to censor, but what happened when we censored, um, it was this big thing, you know, artistically that said censor. And it was very dramatic for such a, you know, a not so offensive. So he got pissed off. And he staged a protest, a visual protest, in the platform saying that why we censored the word Big Brother. And, but he did it in such an amazing way that it was incredible for us. Like he actually made this to protest and he got some uh, support. Like she wrote Kulo all over, but you don't see it, it looks like abstract, uh, in support of him support of having freedom uh, and, and being able to do whatever they want. So we're called Dada because of the Dadaism, Dada movement. We, we can be Big Brother, right? So what do you do? Uh, so we, and he had a point about uh, you know, this protest because he said, well, there are things that could be censored why you censor mine. Uh, so we have this, but this is perfectly, you know, an academic drawing. And this response is funny and cute, sweet. So we decided that we're gonna leave. It has to be really offensive for us to censor it. And we have to find ways of how you censor it. Uh, first of all, that you don't see the person's name, for instance. And now you see it. Um, and then maybe it's discreet that something that fades away, that it's not like you did this drawing and now you're, right? And something that the community does, not that Dada does, but the community will do when they feel it's offensive. Of course, we will veto, you know, swastika or something like that, but it's very, it's very subjective. And uh, so this is a beautiful, you know, sort of poetic, Drawing and then end up, ended up in a, in, a, in a men's genital that was actually drawn in a way that was cute. But it was, I mean, if that's what it inspires you, I felt like 
uh, then you're not being respectful to the other artist, you know? So moving forward, we're still looking for ways to solve that. <clears throat> but moving forward, what is interesting is, if we're creating conversation, how will, how will that look like visually? Like, what can we borrow from oral conversation? Like for me, it's like, can things be, you know, because now everything is the same. They're yelling at you at the same, it's all like there. Like, can there be pauses? Can there be something that is with a high voice when other things are with a low voice? How will it look if, if you're in a public space versus in an intim intimate? How will, it look, how will that look visually? Um, are there opportunities for silence between conversations? How will that look um, visually? Uh, so that, those are very interesting things that we haven't even added to the February way of thinking. Uh, in terms of how you present, this is a website of, of a production company that, uh, that is called Pretty Production and it's a beautiful website. So it's a nice way of ins ins inspiration of how this could be represented. And that's it. So anyone that can draw, reply to that drawing. And thank you so much. Oh,